Hey, how y'all doing today? I'm honored to be here. I, I really am. But I want to start off by saying this. I don't know nobody in this room who's been to heaven. They came back and told me there is one. But I'm going to make preparation for heaven and get there and find out whether there is or not. If not, be ready for heaven and get there and find out there is one. That's me. Now, this is the distinguished panel up here. I'm the young one of the panel. And you see the subject they gave me to talk about. It wasn't because they said we need someone to speak. They gave me this panel to talk about this because this is what I lived for so long. I lived in that life. I was a part of that life. All right now. I know you hit all over me, the, the distinguished senator. Um, oh, he loves that. <laughs> <laughs> I was saying, the senator called me, and I'm going to call him senator. Okay. Called me Papa Smurf. And it's the reason why I asked him to do that. Because behind that name is a history. Y'all might not know it, but y'all might have heard of it. I was involved in one of the biggest drug deals here in, in Charleston, South Carolina. I got arrested with Henry, Henry Judy Benny in UG, South Carolina. What happened to me during that process was I couldn't tell. I might have lost my life. But a distinguished gentleman who's not here no more that the police force might know about, named Mickey Watley, he was a uh, lieutenant for Slay. And at that time, the FBI and Slay came and got me. They wanted to pull me out the cell and talk to me. And I said, I'm not coming out there to talk to y'all. You know, everybody see me talking to y'all, they're going to think I'm telling. <laughs> no, I ain't talking to y'all. And the weirdest thing about it was, that ain't why they pulled me out the cell. They pulled me out the cell because Mickey told me, I think I can help you. I said, well, how can you help me, Mickey? Only thing you want me to do for you is tell them somebody. No, you can't help me. But as a result of Mickey Watley, who ended up working with SLED. He was in North Charleston, I think he was at County 2. Chief or whatever, I don't know his, what he had, his title. The man saved my life. Literally saved my life. All right, now. What he did for me was he gave me a mirror to look in. He didn't give me a story about, well, if you do this, you're gonna end up in jail. If you do that, you're gonna end up in jail. He gave me a mirror and said, look at yourself. And that's what I did. I looked at myself. Now, I knew I couldn't just get away with what I did. I knew I had to go to prison, and I went. And I went for a good little time. But through prison, I studied. I started to read books. And one of the biggest things I found out in them books, and I hope I don't offend nobody, because I'm from Mount Pleasant, South Carolina. I ain't over this side here. <laughs> so I ain't gonna start no trouble, because it's a long way to get back to Mount Pleasant. <laughs> but let me tell you, I found out one of the biggest lies that started my transformation. And that was when they told me the white man was the devil. I said, oh my God. Oh my God, all these years I went believing that. That, oh, this white man is holding me down. Oh, this white man, this, oh, this white man. And I'm a history buff. I study history a lot. I know it down pat. There's nothing you can bring up in history that I don't know about. Because I spent 73 months studying it in prison, over five years studying history. But when I start to realize that these Caucasian people, is that a better way to say it? <laughs> no, my light skin brothers, I'll say that. My light skin brothers was not my enemy. I said, well, what else have y'all been lying to me about? I said, if these guys, if Mickey Wally can come to jail simply because he sees something in me, it's a shame he's dead now, because I think he would have been honored to see me stand up here now and talk. But to see something in me enough to say, you somebody, and I'm not going to preach you here's a mirror, just look at it, that's what I did. So if they can lie to me about that, they're lying to me about a whole lot of other stuff. <laughs> Now normally I bring my transcripts, it's a big transcript, everything that was said in court. And if I had brought it, but I'm gonna tell you, most of them know it, I was told on. I was told on, and I was the low man on the totem pole. They told on me, they tried to push everything on me. But I manned up to it and I stood and I said, here I go again being proved that this whole thing I've been taught, told all my life is a lie. There's no honor among thieves. <laughs> There's no honor. The, the boat has sunk. The shark is eating him. Why should I go back and try to save him? I'm swimming for myself. That's right. So they put me up and they said, Smurf did it. Yeah. 
Yeah. That's why I came here today. I came here to talk to not the older people, but I'm going to say something to y'all too, but to the younger brothers that constantly hear this word snitch. Y'all hear it. Ah, oh, don't snitch. Don't snitch. You know who started that? We did. <laughs> we thought that was a way to intimidate y'all because who could best tell me about the drugs I was cooking than the person who was sitting there cooking it with me? The police wasn't there. They wasn't there when I was doing it. They don't know what happened, but they do. So now I got to make sure, I'm just using that again. Now I got to make sure she don't tell. <laughs> If you tell, you snitch it. If you tell, you snitch it. So I went on and on and on. So I started to realize that got out of control. You know, it really got out of control. Because any man who commits a crime, listen to me now, an act that is wrong, it goes against the dignity, I would normally say state, but I'm going to say war and law, that goes against the dignity of war and law, needs not walk the street. If we can kill somebody, we shouldn't be left to kill another one. And if any one of y'all in here can stop that, you just prevented yourself from getting killed. Yours from getting killed. And the weirdest thing about it, because many of y'all might not have been there, I've been there, is once we get in themselves, we start to realize it. But it's too late. We got 35 years with the new um, non parolable offense, the, the um, war on drugs, they don't no longer give parole for violent offenses. So if you get 30 years, you're going to do 28. Mm. 28 years. Well, I was fortunate again. And I think Mickey Watley went up there and said something. I ain't going to lie. I think he went and talked to Judge Victor Rawls. And this was all in my transcript. This is after the trial. When the judge asked me if I had anything to say, and Lord, I got up in the talk. The legs were shaking because I knew how much time I was getting ready to get. But I realized that what I was faced with was a lie. And the same thing I'm standing before you today talking about is what I said in court. Your Honor, they told me not to snitch. But you see how many people came in here today and pointed the finger at me, Your Honor. And Judge Victor Wall said, yes, I understand, but I can't over. This is all in my transcript. I normally bring it with me. He said, I can't overlook what you did. I have to send you for accordingly to your crime. 30 years. No, I said, Lord, how you think I need 30 years to straighten up? 30? No, y'all, honor, not 30. Not 30. Not for them telling on me, and, and they got the bill running. I had a public defender. She didn't do much for me, but she's back. But I was getting ready to get 30 years? And all I broke down, but Victor Rawls said to me, this is all in my transcript. You can go online and look it up. You were the only person in all the years, I forget how many years he told me he was on the bench, that ever came up here and talked about snitching. And because of that, I'm going to suspend your 30 years and give you five. Mm. And I looked at that judge, and all I could do, because I'm going to prison now, is smile. <laughs> but what I did after that, I smiled at him, I'm not going to lie, I smiled. I turned around and looked at my mama, and I remember that old saying, boy, you got to pray, grandmama. <laughs> As a result of that, I advocate that if any one of y'all believes snitching is wrong, you're wrong. Because if someone kills somebody out here in this community, and you let them go, all you've done is boost their ego. Yeah. Now you're telling them, I can do it again. Yeah. 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 You're letting your video prove it. And we can't do that no more. We have to stop. We cannot allow our children to continuously die by our children. If you leave your gun home, and I leave my gun home, we both going home. And that's more important. There's no way you can sit here and say, because two police officers, y'all know the story, did what they did, that that means all police officers are bad. Because I'm going to call you a liar. I know a man named Mickey Watley. And he was a good cop. Just like Chief Mullins. 
had the opportunity to meet this dude who's adamant about getting me in there when he got these guys to talk to. No, I want to talk to you, sir. Even at one point, he told me I don't want to talk to Pastor Dixon. I want to talk to you. Why? Because you can relate to these children out there. That's how I got to understand them. I don't have nothing to say about all the things y'all talking about, but they said no. <laughs> no. I'm talking about the stretch. I'm talking about that lie that we've heard for so long that got even mamas. You know that boy ain't got no job. And he coming in with the $300 pieces on. You know that boy ain't got no job. And he got a ride out the back door with 26 years old, talking your driveway. <laughs> Oh, he ain't got no job, but you turn your head because every month you slide you that $200 for life You act like you wouldn't know what he's doing. You 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 know what he's doing. But then no spirit to scream because what it says, what I learned, was you live by the soul. Amen. Yeah. 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 And now he lived by the sword okay. and he died because he ran into me who don't got no money. I don't want a quick way. I know the chief ain't coming to get me if I kill him. He messed with me. He says, they out there killing each other. Let him go. And I'm not personally talking about y'all city police because I work along with him. Yeah. Have a, I have a lot of respect for what they've done and how they've given me a position in the community. Much respect. But now that that son that you knew was doing what he was doing is dead, now all of a sudden you want everybody to tell. Yeah. Oh, you seen something happen to my son. Why you ain't tell your son was bad? Right. And then I'm like, yeah, oh Lord, I'm gonna change that. Oh, yeah. You think we're gonna make it out of this thing? And we have to stop that. 
And the only way it's going to stop, me and Cass, oh, we get on the phone, just to talk about what time to show up to the station, we end up on the phone four hours. The only way it's going to stop is people like, like you, man. Don't let that dude get away. Call smart. Now, you might not know how to, like the boys say, bust them guns. I do. My name carries enough weight in Charleston. That's why I like people to call me smart. That's why when you call me smart, pastor calls me smart. So when you see me standing here, you're looking at that. Dang, that's smart. Ain't that that dude who got all that money and all that? Yes, it was. But now I got me something better than money. I got a piece of mind. I got a piece of mind. Now, I didn't want to do this, but there's a man in this building here who's from this community, well, not from this community, but he's over here. He owns a church and he preaches over here. And if anybody got sweating about Smurf, how he used to run me, because he's from where I'm from, how he used to run me out of his yard, because I was the biggest drug dealer. <laughs> I was the biggest drug dealer in my community, and my community didn't want me there. But I had a surrounding of people that wouldn't tell on me. Wouldn't tell. And that's why I'm here today to tell y'all, don't get confused with snitching. Snitching is when a criminal, me, and I'm gonna use you again, hey, no, I'm using Cass. Me and Cass <laughs> agreed to go rob a bank. Me and Cass, we talking in the house. Cass said, okay, smirk. I'll drive and you go. I said, no, I'm a team fan. <laughs> Smurf, you drive and I'll go in the bank. <laughs> okay? You drive and I'll go in the bank. <laughs> and whatever the proceeds is, we're going to split them down the middle. You get half and I get half. Nobody's role in this crime is bigger than that. So me and Cass go and we do good. We hit the bank with our little mask on, and Raphael and James got us on the news at five. And all y'all looking at us say, boy, if I can figure out who this is, I might get a few dollars. You know? And we get away with it. But now we ain't satisfied with that. So we go to John Dallas, to the little small bank y'all got with all your money in it. And we said we're going to do this one more time. And we do it. Get away with it. But Cass, because I told him not to buy all that jewelry, he goes out there and buys them big gold chains and them rings and all them stuff. And the police get behind. Now he get caught. Okay? Do you think if Cass tell him he's doing it to better our community? No! Cass tell him it because he want to get out. And he's serving me up. That's snitching. But when someone kills someone's son in this community, right. and one of y'all see it in your town, that's not snitching. All right. All right. That's living under God's law. That's not snitching. So really, to all your little brothers, you know, who like to listen to that music that guys talk about, they lying. These dudes is cowards. They lying. That lifestyle they're talking about, they lying. They're trying to make money. Mm -hmm. And if selling violence is how they do it, they're going to sell it. Right. And when y'all start playing into it, when mama tell you to wash the dishes and you can't wash it, I already see the world you hit down. Amen. I already see it. Amen. So I'm humbly, because I know I went over 10 minutes, but they talk longer than me. Tell the truth now. <laughs> they talk longer than me. They talk longer than me. You know that. You're in the front seat. You see how long the boy going. I'm not asking you as a pastor or a radio personality. I'm going to do it again now, don't be mad. As a senator and as a homicide survivor victim, I'm asking you all from a thug's perspective. A person who was out there polluting your community. The ones who was creating this mess to simply help me clean it up. Peace.